quickest of the big men. Like many American players, his biggest challenge may be adjusting to the subtleties of the CFL game. You're catching, you're playing a lot of two-gap football. This isn't two-gap football. You get your ass up and roll. Well, I try to ride the cock, and then if it don't work. Well, I, that's the time I just saw you reach like a son of a gun down there without one. I, I, OK? You go the whole time without it. OK. OK? OK. Oh, I love Coach Dyer. <laughs> hey, he's uh, he's actually one of the better coaches I ever had. I mean, he he's a player coach. He like he looks out for his players, but we do work. We work hard. I was retired a while, uh, not by choice, but I was out of work, and uh, I miss the men. I miss being around young kids. So you coach Deacon Jones, or you just you no, 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 no. He was just there. My gosh, I'm not a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> You said like y'all were best friends yesterday. You guys go on, get on over on the sideline, get ready for, uh, or, or, get on over in the shade and get ready for the one-on-one. -on -one. OK, the last I'm break I'm giving you. You look like you're about 25, Coach. <gasps> yeah, that's another way you can make this club. <laughs> Time to go one-on-one and whip some ass. Time to make some cheese. Up next, Miguel Robidet does what he says he'll do. Hey, 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 hey! Hey! Hey, stop it! Stop it! <laughs> 30-year-old Miguel Robidet is now firmly in the second half of a career filled with promise, but lacking in payoff. He's a gifted athlete with a mean streak. And he has an insatiable appetite for football knowledge. Why don't you come to me? Because we're looking at your script talking somewhere. Doesn't matter. You interrupt me anytime. Bear 10, Bear Reed, we say we're going to do all the stunts no matter what, pass or run, right? Yes, Bear 10. OK, but not Bear Reed. Not Bear Reed. We're, we're limited in Bear Reed because we only have four guys committed. Oh, yeah, OK. Bear 10, we have five guys. Yeah, OK, okay. five guys. Yeah. Remember this, kid. There are no bad dogs. There are only bad masters. You have to understand about the defensive front. The, the, the defensive linemen are like thoroughbreds. They're, the, they're tremendous athletes. They, they usually drive the best car. They date the prettiest girls. They're thoroughbreds, and, and they're very high strung. And so any little thing can tick them off or get them upset. Hey, 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 hey stop it! Stop it! No, eat on! Eat on! You took the first punch. Okay, I well, watch you, John. I watch the whole thing. I don't care what. He, wait, wait, wait! I don't care what he said. You took the first punch, didn't you? Robinet, you don't need to pull a face mask. You get ejected. What good does that do us? What does it do to every guy out here if you get ejected? Regular, regular. DK, DK. I care about something DK. bigger than yourself, Miguel. I got you. I got you, man. After a rough start to camp, James Kwame is finally showing the receiving skills that made him the Argos' first pick at this year's CFL draft. That's it, make a miss and miss a tackle. He's also thrown himself into the job of learning how to be an Argos special teams player. Good, that away, that away. Kwame, you've done this before, haven't you? I'm ready to be part of this team and special teams. If I'm there for that, I'll work for it. Because he said the most important thing to him is is effort, and he said a passion for the game. Yeah. I actually do have passion for the game. Do you like playing? I love playing. Why? Because this is all I have. Football has been a source of hope to James since he was nine years old. He was raised by a single mother who worked two jobs to support him and his brother. I've seen my mom work in the basement trying to braid hair to make a couple of money and going to school at the same time. And now she's a teacher. Now she teach and she has a salon open. Uh, she has a salon also. He's been um, good to deal with because he really wants to do well. And you see that in his eyes and in his demeanor. The personality of a CFL quarterback, on the other hand, is much different than that of the young rookie. They can be one of the guys like Dalton Bell or display the swagger of a confident leader like Cleo Lemon. Are you hot with that jacket on, man? <laughs> <laughs> what was uh, what was your thought process when you put that on this morning? <laughs> I just want to know. You <laughs> was cold? You got the jeans on, you got the jacket on, you got a hat on. Lazy. 
and it's and it's sunny out here. <laughs> and you carry about a hundred pounds worth of equipment. Lazy. You're a good man. <laughs> He's like me. Despite competing for the same job, Nate Robinson and Chris Bradwell are friends. Let's go, Bradwell. The two originally met at the 2009 training camp of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and they were reunited this year at the Argo Spring Camp in Florida. We like best friends out there, actually compete against each other. Like he'll do something good on film, I'd be like, oh, that's not all that, and then I'll do something that was amazing. He'd be like, oh, that's not all that. You know, just basically keeping each other going. Like we we're not looking at it as a competition. Please. Cookie demonstration right here. Check this out. 100% grapes. You got a QVC right here, baby. Best thing made for cookies ever. Throw them things on the conveyor belt and show. Bam, bam. Let, let them go through. Pick up your tongs here. Get them nice and ready. And that'll do them. Then you grab your tongs. Bam. Just like magic, baby. Now, what goes with those cookies? Nice 2% milk. Ow. <laughs> bow. Leave it up for five to ten seconds. At least. <laughs> Couple dips. Bow, bow. Mm. Money type Brad Mill on it. No. Actually, one of the trainers put us up. <laughs> Trying to put me on. You got to run the crickets to the ground. It's awesome. <laughs> That's what she said. That's how she said it. After the laughs in the cafeteria subside, Nate Robinson returns to the business of earning a spot with the Argos. Yet while he focuses on football, events are unfolding elsewhere that will change his life far more than winning a job with the Argos ever could. It's Nate Robinson, where you at? Stand up. Let's get this started right on time. We like to talk about ourselves as caring about each other and trust and all those things. Nate Robinson, where you at? Stand up. Nate Robinson, a new player here. Okay, you can sit down now. I just want people to know who you are. <laughs> Nate's a new player here. He just had a tremendous rookie camp. This morning he got a call that his brother car was carjacked and he was shot to death. But you know what Nate Robinson did? Nate Robinson says, Coach, I need to be part of this. This is special. He got like a new 2011 Audi, and it was like a, like a carjacking robbery type deal. And you know, and they like tried to steal his car or whatever, and he like tried to get away, and they started shooting at him, and he crashed. And, you know, just kill like that. When he was on the phone, he was kind of like, he didn't believe it, and then he just, he started crying. So you just, you just knew right then. You didn't want to say you, I mean, I asked him what happened, and he was like, my brother got killed, you know, and I was, couldn't, couldn't really do, I can't say I could feel his pain, but you know, in a sort of way I can, but you know, I've never lost a sibling, so I wouldn't know how, I don't know how close or tight they were. I think they were pretty close, but, it's just tough, you know, that's life. You gotta deal with it. And when I got the news, I was like, you know, in, in like disbelief, real big disbelief. You know, I tried to call around to verify everything. And you know, when I found out it was, everything was true, it was like, you know, I was there in the room, I cried for a while. And, you know, just picked myself up. And then I went into um, the chaplain and Ian and Coach Barker was there and talked to those guys. And basically they were saying, like, whatever you want to do, you can do it. You know, you want to go home. This happens on Saturday. You want to go home now, you can go, but we'll, we'll bring you back. The players have been just tremendous with him. Uh, I know the other night I was sitting in Coach Don Hour's uh, defensive back meetings, and all the defensive backs, after they heard the uh, the news about Nate's brother, they go over to the defensive line meeting, just shake his hand, and rub his head, and tell them they're with him. And that's the kind of guys we got. Guys bond real easily when you, you're like, like in, in, a, in a team and see each other every day. Like, you know, we are away from our families. This is our family right here, you know, so we got to have each other back no matter what. And it's just like, it's like magic almost, 
You know, everybody just, just loves everybody. It's just, I love it, man. That's all I can say. Nate Robinson went home to attend his brother's funeral and returned to camp three days later. One week to go before the first exhibition game, and the team is playing a mock game. Offense and defense will square off, as will the kickoff and kick return teams. CFL referees have been brought in to simulate real game conditions. I think the positives to take out of uh, this mock game with, with Cleo was I thought he made better decisions. Dalton does things that you go, yes, yes, yes. And then he does that one big game killer when he threw what you guys should have intercepted on the goal line, where he goes from one side of the field to the other inexplicably. While the performances of the quarterbacks are mostly positive, there is trouble on the defensive line. American football allows defensive linemen to line up right at the ball. In Canada, the defense lines up a yard away from the ball. It's a subtle difference the new American linemen are struggling to remember in the heat of battle. George, offside again! Well, that was defensive offside three out of seven freaking plays! <laughs> okay, we had three offsides, right? They call one on you? I don't know. They said the right tackle, we were in there. I was on the left. Yeah, they called two more. Hey, uh, evidently, it was you, because I heard Chip yell at you. Right. Yes, sir. It doesn't matter. Yes, sir. And I don't care who's offside. You help. First of all, you got to help each other, right? God damn it. Three times out of seven. You know, how can I put anybody in a game? I, I won't trust you. Right. That's bull. All right. CFL veteran Miguel Robide is not having a problem lining up onside. His issue is more serious. As a nose tackle, he must have the strength to hold his ground against two offensive linemen weighing more than a quarter of a ton. Miguel, I'll tell you what, this is a tough, tough, tough kid, a good kid. Studies, got, a, got notes like that, is trying, is getting better that way. Back up, Nate! Back up, Nate! Back up, Nate! Nate Robinson entered the mock game as the favorite to win the nose tackle job. But he suffers a slight hamstring pull and his play is not as good as it was earlier in the week. What about Bradwell? Uh, Bradwell's up and down also. He's a teaser. You see great athletic ability, uh, makes a play, then doesn't make a play. Doesn't come off a block, kind of uncomfortable. Dejams Kawami does nothing spectacular, but continues to improve a little bit at a time which is enough to impress the decision makers. They were bothering me, man. Sorry. Can I get back? I really like this kid. He has a lot of natural ability as far as a person and want to come in and care about it. He, he has all those attributes. Two days later, Nate Robinson's hopes of becoming a Toronto Argonaut take a turn for the worse. He's injured his hamstring again, and this time the damage is significant. Play back. The timing of the injury couldn't have been worse. When we come back, it's a great sport and a crappy business. <laughs> 